everybody. I'm going to share a vision I had two years ago. And this is just of me. I'm compiling all of these visions I've had. And they're all interconnecting so, so awesomely. Um, when you have them, it's like, it's, it's like that's the only thing you've ever seen because it's just so so profound when you have these experiences. But when you look back on them and, and look how they interconnect, it's, it's amazing because God is telling you a story of how, of how you should react, of how these things play together, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to say that it's really cool. But this is one I had that I'm going to add to the list and this it's definitely on the it passes the test of this this one's from the lord i saw i started i was in the mountains and i was with my family there's some symbolism in this one and i was telling them i i was in the the living room in a cabin we were in this big cabin in the mountains and and i was in the living room and I had a book open and I was telling them, guys, we're close to the end. The great tribulation is coming very soon. That was my exact words. And they were, I was like, I was reading them a story and they were supposed to just be listening. But as soon as I said, the great tribulation is very soon, it's, it's going to be upon us in our lifetime very soon. They looked at me and they started laughing at me. And they were just like, no, it's not. Come on. And then it was almost like story time was over. Like, like they got up and they just, they were like, this is dumb. I'm going to go do something else. Kind of like your brothers and sisters would do anyways uh, in, in a real family. And these were my family. My brothers and, and my mother and my grandma and my whole family, aunts and uncles. And I was telling them this story. Then they got up and they were just like, oh, we don't want to hear this. And I said, no, it really is, guys. I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. Why don't you listen to me? And I got, I got sad. I wasn't really, it wasn't like a frustrated this time. This time I was just sad. I was just like, gosh, they don't believe me. So I kind of like put my head down. I walk out of this cabin and I got in the car outside of this cabin. And there was, the, my cat snoring, there was this, there was this angel with me and in the car as soon as I started driving. And I was driving and I was sad. And I, I didn't really know what to say, but I was just driving. And this angel was trying to comfort me, but also saying, what you said was true. These things are coming. And as soon as that happened, I'm going over hills and, and mountains. The earth started to shake and violently. It, was, it started small like this, and then it started to get bigger and just started to go violent, okay? And I get, I'm at the top of this mountain range, looking down. You know, I was really high up at this point. I had made it really high up. And I saw the earth split open. And I saw this pit. And out of this pit came the blackest smoke that you could ever think of. It was like living smoke. It was like there was demons in it, like just, you know, just clawing around in the smoke. It was like a storm. It had lightning in it. I mean, it was like the greatest smoke, the greatest blackness I had ever seen was released from this pit that this earthquake had opened up. And I was like, no, 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 we've got to, we got to fix this. And this angel was just like, just watch these things, observe these things. And then out of this pit, I heard something began to kind of roar. Something was going to come out of this pit. And I saw the smoke being displaced. And this smoke was going over the land, like covering. It was beginning to overtake 
the earth. It was overtaking the land of the earth. And it was a lot. I mean, it, it was going to cover everything in its path. And you couldn't see through it. It, it, it was going to blot out the sun. You know, it was, it was that dark. And out of this pit comes a dragon. And he was covered in ashes and soot and smoke rolling off of him. And he looked like a Chinese dragon, not like the typical, you know, like Lord of the Rings dragon where he's got four legs he can walk on and stuff. This was like, a, it looked like a Chinese dragon in the sense of it was, uh, you know, it had a head in it and it had a long body and, you know, it was a giant serpent dragon and it, and it flew without wings. So it was able to just rise up out of this pit and I knew this was the dragon and the pit of Revelation. And I was just distraught. And I was like, no, we've got to close this. We've got to stop this. We've got to stop this. No, I don't want this to happen. It's not good for the world. You know, I was frantic. And this angel looked at me and said, foolish man, you can't close this. For do you know that it is God himself that causes the Orcus to be opened? And I have never heard the word Orcus before. And I'm going to tell you what happened after this, this experience and what it means. I'm, actually, I'll pull it up on Google. I've never heard that word before. Don't you know that it is the Lord himself that causes the Orcus to be open? Don't you know that no one can shut what the Lord hath opened? And then I woke up in my regular like cold sweats and um, from this experience came to whatever you want to call it. And I was just it, it was it was a heavy experience. You know, I definitely I told everyone I'm close to when I had it about it. And it was pretty intense. So I'm going to go over some of the symbolism in this as an interpretation in the sense of connecting what it really means on an overall scale of which you don't know at the time when you see it, but when you look back on it, you can interpret with the Holy Spirit. So the cabin in the mountains, I, I do believe that refers to the fact that we're going to have a place in the mountains for God's family. I really do believe that. And we're, we're working on it. It's happening right now. We're, we're getting all of it together. It's God is providing. It's pretty awesome. And by the way, if you want to give, we appreciate it very much. Um, send an email so we can send you a tax deductible receipt. But the fact that I was reading a book meant I had information to give. And, you know, as a prophetic voice, somebody that walks in that office, uh, the book was, was the word I was giving them. And the fact that they were my family designates them as Christians, the body of Christ. And I was telling them the message that we were close to the tribulation, that we were in the end times. And they all laughed and got up and they just left the room. They didn't want to hear me talk about it. They laughed at me and I was disappointed. So that means that the family of God although they may be fascinated with end times prophecy and end times subjects, they don't want to hear the true message that we are close and the implications of that. And that is very true. The majority of people are just like, they, they do this and they go, preacher, rapture, preacher, rapture, preacher, rapture, preacher, rapture, preacher, rapture. <laughs> That's their response. And I promise you, if that's your response, 
you're going to be the fool in the story. And I say that with all respect in the sense of that's what the Bible calls you. Proverbs 37 says, A wise man foresees trouble and prepares himself and is preserved, but a fool does nothing and goes about his way and he perishes. So if you don't do anything and you know hard times are coming, the Bible calls you a fool, not me. Don't be the fool in the story. And don't give me this talk about all we need to do is spiritually prepare. That's nowhere in Scripture. It doesn't ever say that. In fact, everyone who was spiritually prepared, let me give you this, they heard God because they were with Him in spirit. They heard Him so because they, they were spiritually with God. They heard Him speak to them. And then they prepared and took action based on what He said to them. That's what being spiritually prepared really looks like. Faith without works is dead. You can't just be like, I'm spiritually prepared, I'm spiritually prepared, I'm spiritually prepared. You can say that all you want, but whenever this the economy collapses and you didn't get raptured and you don't know where to go and you can't really communicate with many people, you're not going to be able to plug your ears then and say, I'm spiritually prepared. To be honest with you, your spirit is going to be brought low. Your spirit is going to be down in the dumps because you didn't do anything about it. And your your spirit's going to be complaining to God and lacking in faith because you're like, God's not taking care of me. What do I do now? Okay, don't be that person. And if you, here's the thing. If, if you want to just do this whole plug your ears, I'm spiritually prepared, I'm spiritually prepared, preacher of rapture, preacher of rapture. If you want to do that right now for yourself, go ahead. But here's the thing, is you're going to be held accountable for what you do on the account of your kids. That attitude is going to hurt your kids. They're going to be put in the way of danger and starvation if you have no way to take care of them because you're not listening to the warning message that's coming from the voices that God has established in this hour. And you're not even testing the spirits. You haven't even gone to your prayer closet and actually non-biasedly asked God, is there a pre-trib rapture? I used to be a pre-tribber, and guess what? I asked God with a humble heart. I was a avid pre-tribber, by the way. I asked him with a humble heart. I said, God, I'm going to lay down my thoughts. I'm going to lay down my Tim LaHaye book. I'm going to lay down my left behind, and I'm just going to ask you, point blank. I'm going to test you, the living God, and see if you'll speak to me, and I'm going to put these other voices down, just for a moment. And guess what I heard? Thus says the Lord, Yahweh Almighty, Jesus Christ, there is no pre-trib rapture coming for you. Prepare to endure for me as I have endured for you, says the Lord. And I will hang my hat on that all day. And guess who's going to be true at the end of the day? It's not even about me being right. But the words I just spoke, that's a real word from God. And everyone else is lying. I promise you that. And the same, the same statistics of liars versus truth tellers are probably exactly spot on to what it was in the Old Testament. I promise you it is. The pattern's probably exactly the same. There's probably 70 to 80 percent of people that are lying to people about this issue. And there's probably 20 to 30 percent, if that. There's probably 20 to 30 percent of people who know that they know, but probably only a portion of them, like me, are even courageous enough to put their put their uh, reputation on the line instead of playing popularity contest and tickling people's ears with false hope. Okay, the the statistics are probably exactly the same as the Old Testament. It's probably the same as Elijah's day where it's like 
how many thousands of false prophets and then there's only a few true ones. And God preserved 3,000, he said, but there was a lot more false. So, guys, go ask the Lord on that issue and get a word and then don't ever look back, okay? He's going to tell you the same thing he's told people who've already heard him on the issue. And guess what? Matthew 24 was Jesus speaking, and it tells us the order of events in the end times and when the rapture is. Case closed. Master speaks, not Tim LaHaye. I'm going to tell you, Tim LaHaye and all of these pre-trib rapture people, even people I look up to and love, the Lord's going to hold you accountable for lying to his people and not laying down your pride and hearing from him on this issue. And it is a deception. And there's a reason the devil inserted it 100 years exactly. It came around, well, you know, a little over 100. It came around in the late 1800s. It was never a solid doctrine that existed any time in history until the 1800s. And guess what? The devil put it in right before the last century and a half of the age of man. Why do you think he put it in our Schofield Reference Bible? Why do you think the devil inserted it into the most popular society in the world, the Western society? It's because he wanted the whole world to be deceived with this false doctrine. So people would be sleeping, just like the book says, that all the virgins are sleeping at the time of the bridegroom coming. All right, Even the wise ones were sleeping, and the foolish ones. They were all, they all fell back asleep. So I'm just saying, guys, you're going to be held accountable for the people that this hurts before God, not me. And you might suffer greatly in this lifetime as your punishment for this lie, for the people that suffer on account of it. And you might even suffer in the life to come, the eternal life, if you continue to lie to people in a manner that ends up causing them harm. Because it will. It's very easy logic, you know. So, yes, the body did not, the, the family didn't want to hear me in this in this vision. They didn't want to hear me. And then I was disappointed and I left kind of like any, you know, real prophetic voice will do and just run to the woods like, oh, I'm down in the dumps. Nobody wants to listen to me. God told me they wouldn't hear me, so I'm kind of sad now. <laughs> so, and then I saw the pit and the smoke and the dragon, and I think that's very self-explanatory. The unleashing of the ancient god Apollyon is pro my conjecture on that in the sense of whatever's been down there locked in that pit is going to be unleashed. And it is, it is an ancient power. It is, it is like Leviathan. Okay, that's a better term. It's Leviathan. It's the thing that caused the world to be destroyed before God put Adam here. It is, it's Leviathan. It's, it's a destructive force of chaos and darkness. So, I saw this. There's that vision. I think it's pretty strong. Its implications are pretty great. And... You know, for people who just like to consume information, I guess it has entertainment value, but I really hope these aren't entertainment value for you. I really hope the Holy Spirit convicts you through these these tales, these these visions, these understandings he's giving to to all of his his kids right now, you know and and I'm not saying to do not break fellowship with pre-tribbers um, but the atmosphere of God's feelings about that now are a lot less permissive than they were 20 years ago because we're getting so close and there's so many people that are going to starve because they've been lied to. Think of how that makes God the Father feel. And I can tell you, he does not like it. He's bad. He's bad. It's a lie. It's a lie from hell. It is a lie from Satan to put his body to sleep. And I want to say that clearly. And I already said the thus saith the Lord part. And watch me be true. 
and a couple of the other people who are telling the truth. It's just I'm one of the first ones that have come out and said, thus saith the Lord on this issue. Joel Richardson, I look up to that man, and I think God has raised him up as a great teacher for this hour, one of the greatest. Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown, love him. Whoa, Vlad, I can't really say his, his last name very well. Isaiah Salvatar, you know, these guys are walking in Revelation. And they're being careful, though. They're being nice, which I think we should. But the, I, the mental I carry is not asking, the Lord's not asking me to be super sweet-hearted about this issue. He's asking me to rebuke the body of Christ and say, Thus saith the Lord, there is no pre-trib rapture. Prepare to endure for me as I have endured for you. That is King Jesus speaking through me right now. And that is a real prophetic word. And it will be honored by him who spoke it. I don't have to honor it. He's the one who honors real words because he's the one who spoke them. His word cannot return void. That's why getting a real word from God is really awesome. Go get, go get a real word from God. He speaks to us. He said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. That's what the scripture says. Uh, it also says, you have not heard him because you are not of him. Whoa, that's, that's a big one. Go hear him this day, guys. Go speak to him. Ask him the truth about these issues. God is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of justice. He is the spirit of almighty power. He is the spirit of grace and love. He is the spirit of hope. He is the spirit of healing. Lord, The Lord has so many wonderful attributes to himself but truth is one of them so if you call upon him he'll give you the truth and it might not be the best for your feelings and it'll cut you in half it promises to actually it'll cut it'll cut you between what you want to hear and what is true and that's the soul and the spirit it'll just chop you in half and that's fine i welcome god Right now, with all my brothers and sisters listening, with you and you and you and you, how about this? Let's say a prayer together to close this thing out. I welcome you, God, with all fear and trembling, but with great expectation to chop me in half with your truth and do surgery on me and make me into an acceptable vessel before you, even if it hurts. Woo! Feel that. Say that prayer and see what happens. I've said it a lot of times, and it has hurt a few times. But you know what? Bless his holy name. His judgments are amazing. And whatever he wants to do with his clay, he has a right to do. Because he is the Most High God. And he is him who made all things. So I ask him to remake all of us, even now. I ask him to fill us with his truth instead of our truth because we don't have the truth unless we have him. And I ask this in Jesus' name.